Hey, everybody. Welcome to this episode of the Brutal Truth About Selling Selling Podcast. Hey, a big thank you for everybody out there who's connecting up with me on LinkedIn. If you see my content, I got a bunch of funny videos and informational videos on the Brutal Truth About Sales and Selling company page. So make sure you check that out. Today, we're going to be talking about pillars, systems, strategies, because what we're finding, and I talk about this a lot, but the people who take their skills, their strategies, their process, and get it out of their head and get it onto something else that they can see it, that they can walk through it, analyze it, improve it. Those are the sales reps that really make a difference and are also staying focused on what matters. That may sound a little contradictory, but it's that right mix. The people who wing it, um, you know, it takes too long. It just, do you really have five or 10 years to wing it before you're going to become really great at sales? Maybe you do. It's up to you. It's your life, not mine. But I, I got a great guest on today. Uh, Brian Margolis is going to be sharing his story. Uh, he's got a very simple system. It, what he does is just breaks it down into what really matters, write it down, and focus on it every day. And that works for him. It works for me. Um, and I think it'll work for you. So we're going to talk through it. Uh, before we do, I want to make sure you're checking out CoVideo. CoVideo is the way. Every rep I talk to is saying, you know, video email is my breakthrough app to get things started. And when I get one, I always hit play. You know, even if they don't have the little thing up holding my name, uh, I'm curious. I can't just like glance through it to see if it's a pitch. I got to watch it. It's a curiosity and it shows effort. It show, it's naturally personalized. You cannot, I, mean, I guess you can send a canned one, but uh, I don't think people do that. And I, I, don't, I wouldn't recommend it either. So check out CoVideo. Uh, you can try it for free. The people there are fantastic. It's a great team. Uh, they got an office dog named Emma, who's my, um, my Insta doggy. <laughs> I don't have a pet. But uh, I see a picture of Emma every day on Instagram. So make sure you, you know, follow Emma on Instagram as well. Also, Pipe Drive. Um, all the listeners are telling me Pipe Drive is just killing it. Uh, somebody shared a video just yesterday about how they uh, use a uh, shared email box as a way of getting people on board it. Uh, so Pipe Drive, it's just it's cooking. It's no longer you know the single user... CRM, it's now team-based, enterprise quality, connected up with your email, your calendar. I think you really got to check it out. Uh, you can try it for a month for free with the Brutal Truth coupon code. And if you talk to anybody there, make sure you tell them you heard about it on the Brutal Truth. Let's get Brian on the line, and I'll sum it up at the end. Hey, Brian, thanks for joining us today. As a way of getting started, tell us about yourself. Oh, thanks, Brian. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm actually... I probably come from a different background than most people you have on this podcast. I'm actually a former scientist. I grew up wanting to be Jacques Cousteau, right? Uh, <laughs> How'd that work so, out? <laughs> yeah. So I still want to be Jacques Cousteau. But uh, no, I was a research scientist in, in that world of marine science and fisheries. And uh, But for the last two decades, I've actually been an entrepreneur. I've, I've worked for myself, had my own businesses. Uh, some have been better than others obviously, like most entrepreneurs. And, you know, the, what started happening a few years ago, I should say a few years ago, more than a few years ago was, you know, for you can, you can only for so long say I'm an entrepreneur, I'm not in sales, right? Yeah. And actually believe you're not a salesperson. And then you realize, no, I'm a salesperson. And, and not only am I a salesperson, but I better become a pretty darn good one. Yeah. And so I, I developed some stuff for myself, right for myself first and uh eventually that that trickled later into my consulting and, and my coaching and i guess that's what we're gonna talk about today yeah so let's let's dig into that um what was the motivation for documenting it you know the the motivation for me it's funny the, the intro to my book the, the gentleman who wrote the forward uh a, absolute dynamo but he would. I, I, I. He says in the book, and I honestly believe this. If he didn't push me, I probably wouldn't have written the book, right? Um, I just. I. I was a mess, and and I. And <laughs> I thought I was abnormal, right? The fact that I would work from morning till night, 
And again, you could say entrepreneur or sales, but what I was doing was selling. There's no doubt about it. And that's how I, I, I got money in the door, right? And, you know, I was just one of these people. I was constantly changing directions. I was working hard morning till night. I was, you know, shiny object. I was this, I was that. And, you know, at the time, people weren't really talking about, I guess, ADD, but I probably would have self-diagnosed myself, right? You know, and so... I kind of developed this system for me to simplify my business, to make sure that I was focused on the right things. And I shared it with a few people. And what surprised me was what I thought was so simple and obvious once I figured it out was revolutionary to them, right? And what I started realizing was I'm not the exception. I'm the norm. You know, most people are not strategic, right? Most people spend their time in kind of just go, go, go mode, Yeah, you know, where, where busyness becomes a form of laziness, right? It's a distraction, and, yeah. Yeah, and, and so as I started telling more people about it, and it actually started helping them, uh, when I did decide to step out and start helping other businesses and other salespeople, I started teaching this methodology, and, and the impact it had was, it, it was exciting. And so I started reverse engineering exactly what I was doing to help these people so that even those I wasn't working with could kind of, uh, you know, do it on their own, could simplify their business. Right. And so that, that was kind of the genesis of, of coming up with a system of, of documenting it. And I think I always realized that, you know, people have a hard time being consistent and doing the right things consistently. What I think surprised me and still surprises me to this day is how few people actually know what the right things to do are, uh, right? Or, or want to admit it. I mean, because well, if, <laughs> if you listen to you know, a football coach who's lost three games in a row, they all say the same exact thing. You know, we got to go back to the basics. Right, right. <laughs> you know, they, they don't say, oh, we've got to come up with a new magic play that no one ever thought of. Sure. And, and I think what happens, I, I just recently, I'm about two weeks removed from, I think I did five national sales trainings in about 10 days in five different cities, right? I guess it's that time of year. Yeah. And so, you know, I was speaking to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of salespeople and all year, but especially this time of year, right? When, when you start turning into it, when we're recording this as we, as, as we're in the end of the first month of the year here, what starts to happen is you hear all these words come out of their mouths that have no agreed upon definitions, right? Words like, oh, this year I want to focus more on that or double down on that or get better at this or do more of such and such, right? Yeah. And, and so you hear all that. And then what I do in my system and, and, and what surprises me is then I try to help them actually work backwards and say, okay, well, what does that actually mean? Because – at any point during the given week, you don't know if you did more of something. You don't know if you doubled down on building the relationship, right? And so, you know, I try to move it to words that actually you can measure. Yeah. And give us a hint of what the plan would look like or what the process you would take the person through. So the goal, the goal of the process is, I mean, the basic belief system is that most sales reps, their success is based on a combination of, you know, their work ethic and their talent, right? And for me, I want to give them that third piece, the strategy. And so the goal before I talk about the process is I want to boil their business down to the point where they can run it from an index card, right? Yeah. I want to simplify their business. So as long as they do, you know, A, B, C, D, and E every week, which is in their control, everything else takes care of itself, right? It's, it's 90% of the game. And so what the process is, is, you know, I ask him a series of questions and the book goes through this and you, you answer a series of questions to get potential pillars. Okay. What I call pillars, these activities I'm referring to. And then you kind of run those pillars through a set of criteria and we can get more specific if you want, but we run them through a set of criteria to make sure they're actually pillars. And then when it's all said and done, we basically select the ones that they can reasonably get done in a week. And so, you know, it's a, it's a thinking process. 
And then it's kind of a run it through the, the criteria process. And, you know, it's so funny when it comes out the other side, right? <laughs> I mean, I, I have sales reps that, that I'm working with. You know, they're pulling in seven figures running their business from a folded index card, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it looks so stupid simple. I have, you know, there's, there's big companies that are licensing this process from me. And yet the end result is so simple. But I do warn people that getting to that end result takes some time, right? It, it always seems stupid simple, but going through the process, it requires you to do a little bit of thinking. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you brought up the T word. <laughs> well, right. well, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. So the second question when, when coming up with your potential pillars is, and again, on the surface, it seems like a simple question. You know, what is one skill that if you significantly improved on would have the biggest impact on your business? Now, on the surface, that seems like an easy question to answer, right? So you'll get salespeople who say, oh, for me, it's closing or this or that. You know, I'll get all sorts of answers. And what I try to explain to them, and, and I think you know this, um, there is nothing you can't learn anymore. Right. There is no shortage of great sales training out there. No shortage of examples of people willing to give you content even for free. The key isn't just go, 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 learn more, learn more, learn as many sales skills as you can. From a strategy perspective, the key is picking the right skill to learn. Right. Mm -hmm. Because if in any given business, learning this skill versus learning that skill certain skills are going to have a much bigger impact on your business than others, depending on where you are. And so it's a more difficult question to answer when you actually realize, okay, what is that one skill right now that if I improved in would have the biggest impact? Because would you agree, Brian? I mean, what can't you learn anymore? Right? Well, <laughs> I, I think people confuse learning with knowing. Yes. I think learning has an element of doing it. And doing it to the to a skill level of being good at it. Of course. Yeah. I, I think people get too comfortable. Oh, I know I should get up early. I know I should make uh, this number of calls, touches, emails in a day. Uh, but I don't. <laughs> you know, they... <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 that's the that's the second part of the book. That's, yeah. The first part is how do you identify what you should be doing? The second part is how do you actually do it, right? How, how do you actually uh, execute on that consistently? And, you, and you're right. That's obviously obviously part of the problem as well. So what do you think is the number one skill that really turns people around? Uh, without a doubt, it's it, – it, okay, I'll give you the category because it really depends on what you're selling and how you sell, yeah. right, if, you're, if you know. It always, not should say always. I don't. I don't like absolutes. I think there's too many absolutes out there in the training world. <laughs> so sounds great from the stage, but I don't think it's realistic, right? Yeah. Um, cold calling is dead. Cold calling is the best. But the, the, it always falls under the category of effective messaging, right? So whether if you're face to face with someone, whether that's your ability to tell your story or tell your product story you know, in a way that gets them to take the next step or gets them to take action. Right? I think so many salespeople know their information inside and out that they think they're good because they're comfortable, right? That they, they, they don't need to practice anymore. They know it inside and out. But there's a big difference, as you know, between being good and, effect and being effective, right? Yep. So it's usually something like an in-meeting presentation being effective. You know, for those people who have trouble generating leads, you know, I work with my clients a lot on direct response copywriting, okay? I can't believe, and you're probably the same way, the emails that come into my inbox, right? Which, you know, as a salesperson, I love other people when they're trying to sell me. Like, it fascinates me, right? They're pretty my, bad, my wife hates they? when I open up the ads in the mail because I go through them. But, but to me, you know, the ability to write an email in 2019 that someone actually responds to that's a pretty powerful skill, right? That's a pretty powerful skill. So it usually, usually falls under the category of messaging. Not always, but usually. 
And has there been a particular market segment that uh, this system works best for? Either deal size, um, <clears throat> uh, industry, demographic? Yeah. I, you know, I do a lot of work in the financial services industry. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I, I do a lot of work with, I have clients who do software as well. So it's usually business to business where I have found that, you know, this is just my particular application. I mean, fr from a broad point of view, I've worked, you know, whether I've worked with an entrepreneur or someone who owns a law firm or someone who's an individual sales rep, it's effective I find it to be the most effective in high ticket sales Yeah, where it's not just a matter. There's not a quick transaction where you have to build relationships. You have to actually be consultative in your sales process, right? There's a lag between, you know, your prospecting and a deal actually closing because that can get pretty frustrating where, you know, people can get down on themselves and, think, oh, well, I didn't, you know, didn't my sales numbers weren't high this week or this month. I must be doing the wrong things. And, and so that's a dangerous place to be in a long sales cycle, right? You could be doing all the right things. Things aren't just falling into place. So this seems to be more effective there because it allows sales reps to focus on lead indicators, right? It allows them to say, all right, listen, sales where I, weren't where I wanted them to be this week or this month, but I know because I've established my pillars I know I'm doing the right things. And that's I know the I'm hard doing the part, right, right? We don't know until it happens. We we don't know, but I think, you know, like you like you were saying earlier and this might have been in the in the pre the pre-recorded part, I'm not I don't remember, but you know, the football coach, right? It's, you know, back to the basics. We know what you need to do as a sales rep. And so I'm not saying you, you know something works, you need to get out there, you need to test it, you need to give it enough reps, but I think too many sales reps change directions too quickly. Yeah. They try something, it doesn't have results, they jump over here, right? Doesn't have results, you know, they try over here. I mean, prospecting. I, I, I honestly, if you go back into your emails, I think I prospected you maybe three times till I got a response, <laughs> right? <laughs> but but, but I, I know from history, it's a matter of, you know, breaking through. Whereas some people would say, well, they were, you know, Brian Burns wasn't interested in the first email I wrote him about talking to him. So, Hey, maybe the email's bad. Let me change the email. Right. And so, you know, I, I think, it, I think it's more effective in those kind of situations where lead indicators are as important as lag indicators. And that's it. And so much of it is timing, certainly in the financial services space. It's typically life events that cause a purchase or a switch or, uh, you know, the pain that would uh, open them up to the procurement of it. No, that, that's actually, that's absolutely it. And, and, you know, you have to believe in the compound effect. Yeah. If, if you, if you've been in sales long enough, the compound effect and momentum are, you know, they're amazingly powerful things. And so a lot of times it's, it, although it looks easy on paper, it's hard to do the right things week in and week out. And so, you know, I truly believe that you earn a lot more money by focusing on less things, right? I think focus is your limiting resource, not time. And so, you know, saying that and doing it, like you said, are two different things. And, and, and that's what this process is designed for. Yeah. And now, is it something that you've put into a CRM or is that just doesn't make sense? The process itself? Yeah. No, it, it, I mean, it's, it's nothing that's in the CRM. This is a, this is a personal exercise, right? Okay. Th this is an exercise, you know, you need to learn the process of how to identify what your pillars are, right? What, what, there's certain criteria around what a pillar is. Once you have the pillars, once you have your five, six pillars or so in place, depending on, uh, on, the, on the individual, then as far as keeping track of them, listen, some people are fancier and they want to do an Excel sheet and things like that and the CRMs. But for this part of the game, um, you know, to me, an index card works L low tech, high check. Right. I mean, that's up to you yeah. whether you want to keep it on your phone or not. Obviously, CRMs and things like that play a crucial role. A common pillar, for example, for sales reps that I work with with regards to CRMs. Well, CRMs have these great reporting tools, right? If you do them right, 
They have these great reporting tools and they're great for follow up and staying on top of things. But that's only if you remember to actually access them, right? If you <laughs> don't, if, if you don't use this, yeah. listen. Ninety percent of salespeople, sorry, CRM companies, but ninety percent of salespeople tell me I don't like CRMs. They're like black holes. They're you know I never. But that's because they don't know how to use them. In my that's just again my opinion, right? They're they're not using them correctly. Yeah. A lot of times, what a pillar actually will be for some of some of the reps I work with. And some of the companies I'm working with is to actually, you know, review a certain report once a week, right? Doesn't even necessarily mean you take action on it, but just by reviewing the report, like here's people I haven't talked to in this long, or here's people who at some point said they were interested in this, right? Just by putting it in front of your face once a week, it has that bleed effect, if that makes sense, to actually taking action, right? So to me, CRMs, it's not about, they're usually not the pillar themselves. It's usually doing something where you access that information because, you know, sometimes it falls under the category of it works so well, I stopped doing it, right? (laughs) Yeah. Well, we probably get delusional on, you know, the number of people that we contact, what our pipeline is really valued at, because we want to feel comfortable. We don't want to get the big chill. Brian, you nailed it. It's I have learned through my own, through having coaches myself, not only coaching other people, but having coaches myself, our perception and our reality as humans is pretty, <laughs> it's pretty not always dead on, right? No. A lot of times we think we have more going on than we really do. And we think we talk to someone more frequently than we do. We think we're doing more than we're doing. And so, in fact, that's one of the, one of the criteria of a pillar is that it has to be measurable weekly, right? That you have to be able to cross it off at some point and say, I did it. Yeah. Not just, oh, one of my pillars is uh, I want to build more relationships with top guys. <laughs> okay, that's not really a pillar. That's a goal, right? But what do you actually have to do on a week-to-week basis, as small as it might be or as big as it might be, to make sure that happens over time? Yeah. And are these habits that the rep should be building every day? Great question. So here's, here's the cheat code. Now, remember I said earlier, I'm not a big fan of absolutes, right? A lot of times I'll be in a live training. I'm sure you've done stuff like this and people want an answer and you have to say, it depends. (laughs) It depends on the situation. Um, the way I've structured the pillar system is the goal is to create one super habit. Okay. One habit. Habits are extremely hard to build as you know. And so the goal of the pillar system is the only pillar I need you to eventually build is the habit of executing on your pillars. Meaning if that if you are executing on your pillars week in and week out to the point where it becomes this open loop in your head, right? It becomes this open loop in your head that you need to cross them off. You need to close that loop. It's a true neurological habit then you don't have to worry about developing a lot of the other habits. For, for example, in my personal life, as embarrassing as this is to say, you know, I hate working out, right? And, and I've seen your videos and you obviously work out all the time or I wouldn't be watching your videos. <laughs> but but um, I, I just, I, I've never had the experience most people have had working out about these endorphins and you feel great and I, I don't know what it is. I'm missing that gene, right? If you told me I could have a healthy life and never work out again, I'd be fine with that. But here's the thing. I have a pillar of – I have a workout pillar of three and 300, and part of that pillar is I have to do three cardio workouts a week. And the funny part is I work out more consistently. Not that this is a very high bar, but I would say I work out more consistently than 95% of this country. Okay? Yep. And the reason is simple. Because I'm at the point where I have to hit my pillars. Whatever is on paper has to get crossed off by the end of the week. So if you can relate this to business, I have to work out. I work out more to hit my pillars than for the workout itself, right? I hit my business pillars at this point more to actually complete that habit, to scratch that itch, more so than anything else because – the, the reality is, as you as I was saying before, habits are hard, right? But if you if you get the habit of pillar execution down, it doesn't matter what you create as your pillars; they're going to get done, right? Yeah. They're going to get done. 
And so <laughs> that, that doesn't mean people don't have routines and things like that in order to hit their pillars. Yeah. And how long did it take before that pleasure of, you know, checking it off was more powerful than avoiding it? You know, for me, for me personally, it was probably a good six to seven months. Wow. Right. Yeah. I, but, but here's the funny part. We say, wow. Right. But time that goes six by to, anyway. <laughs> yeah. That six to seven months, however many years ago that was now that I'm on this side of the fence, I, I would have done it for five years if that's what it took. I sitting and, and, and my, now I have clients who have picked up a lot quicker than me. Right. And I have a weird feeling that's because of the social proof aspect. See, when I was doing this, there was no one to look at as a success story, right? Now, a lot of times when people come to me or they see me, they already know of people who've you know, done big things with this, right? So I have a feeling that might have something to do with it, right? They're a little more driven to get it done. That's why they did it quicker than me. Yeah, and each is independent. You know, if it's something simple like uh, yeah. flossing or drinking more water, that's easier to do than thirty minutes of cardio. C correct, and and remember to do it all to do, yeah. to hit all of your pillars, not just some of them, right? Yeah. And, and but here's the thing: that five or six months or whatever it took me at the time. I mean, I didn't measure exactly. I mean, I, I just, I, I, it's kind of like controlling my mornings. I don't know how people do it any other way anymore. You know, when I started blocking seven to 10 o'clock every day of my life, you know, I don't, I don't do calls before 10 o'clock Eastern, right? I don't do it. Seven to 10 is my time every day to build my business. You know, you've heard about controlling your mornings. Like you said, the difference between knowing and doing right Yeah. now, now that I'm on this side of the fence, I don't know how anyone operates any other way. I, I can't believe people can just sit down, start answering calls going back and forth with people on email, figuring out what to do next. It, it's mind boggling to me. So it, it was a habit worth forming. <laughs> yeah. And I think if you don't have that, you have a day of distraction and you're exhausted and you didn't accomplish anything. Right. And, and here's the thing, Brian, though, you've heard that before. I've heard it before. Everyone listening has heard all this stuff before. So again, going from knowing to doing, right, to get to that point where I operate that way. It wasn't easy at first, but now that I'm there, talk about it being worth it. Yeah. And, and it's the same thing for pillars, right? You know, how do you have sales reps who are making a million dollars a year running it from an index card? Well, they had to be willing to change the way they operate, change the way they think. And the other thing they had to do was redefine what work is, right? I mean, as a sales rep, to, you know, everyone as a sales rep, sometimes you think the only thing that's work is driving to meetings, <laughs> scheduling to meetings, having meetings, right? Anything else is not work. Well, I, I would, you know, I, I joke sometimes, but, you know, sales reps usually don't have a boss in the same office. But if you can't, if they came by your desk and you were emailing and all this stuff, they go, oh, look at Mr. or Mrs. Sales rep. They're working, right? Yep. If they walked by your office and you were reading a book, they go, oh, they must be on their lunch break. Or thinking about a deal, you know, or what right, to do or next. Thinking, or, or being strategic, planning something out on a piece of paper, right? Yep. That is, I wouldn't even just say that's work. That's probably the critical work, right? The As Perry Marshall says, the $10,000 an hour work. Yep. And, and so, you know, you have to, it's, it's a mindset shift. But, you know, listen, my job with the pillar system, and this is all I want your audience to get, is that, you know, Less is more, it's true, and that you will make a lot more money, you will make a lot more in sales by figuring out the few things you do need to focus on and making sure you're focusing on them every week. Though That is the priority. Excellent. Hey, Brian, appreciate your time today. Where do people go to connect with you, uh, learn more about your work, and get your book? Uh, I'll, I'll keep it simple. I don't have to give all the handles and everything. If you just go to productivitygiant.com, ProductivityGiant.com will get you everything you need. You can get the book. You can you can contact me. You can access the information, free reports, all that kind of stuff. 
I really like that discussion because I like to keep things simple. The beauty of being a great sales rep is taking something that's super complex, like the complex sale, where you're trying to get a company to change, do something different, buy your product, get it through uh, the order through procurement in a reasonable amount of time. These are all talent, skills, and strategies that are too hard to memorize. We got to get it out of our head, write it down somehow, analyze it, improve it, uh, prevent the things that we know are going to happen and ensure the things that we want to happen to happen. And here we are, you know, I'm recording this uh, Q1, uh, the first full week in March. And here we are, we think the year's a long time, right? Okay, Q1 essentially is over. If you're in the complex sale and you're not in procurement right now, uh, the likelihood of that deal closing is really diminished. Now, look at the rest of the year. I'm looking at my year at a glance calendar. I highly recommend you getting it. It's one of my uh, secret hacks of productivity and strategic thinking. Instead of thinking that a year is just this infinite amount of time and, oh, you can do so much in a year. Once you start mapping out a year, hmm, <clears throat> it goes by fast. So Q2 uh, is a great quarter. Because, you know, all the Q1 BS uh, kickoff, territory adjustment, believe me, I've, I've been hearing about it for two months now. I warn everybody, no one listens to me. Hey, I got a podcast. So Q2 is really the time to fill up the pipeline. Get your calendar just booked with great opportunities. Because guess what happens? Then Q3, it's the summer quarter. Where, I don't know about your business, but two months... Uh, you feel like uh, we're in a recession. July and August are just brutal. People taking vacations, holidays. It's the summer. Nobody wants to work or <laughs> focus on buying stuff or changing. And then you get September where you have to like pretty much make up for those two months. Then you move into Q4. And if your pipeline isn't just full, that you don't have the relationships already built, uh, that's your year. The year is over. So this is the time to get in to start the conversation, get the meeting. Um, You'll, you'll just have your calendar booked. People are just like, they want to renew. They, they learned it all, they applied it all, and they still want to renew. And I'm like, okay, let's do it. Let's do it for another year because their calendar is booked. I'm bringing in new stuff every week. I'm doing one-on-ones. You get unlimited coaching, mentoring, whatever you call it. We hop on Zoom for a half hour. We apply the course to what you're doing. Who else does this? And it's with me. It's not with some flunky or nothing. It's me. Well, kind of flunky. But I, I share the, the inner secrets of what's working here for me and how we've scaled this <laughs> using technology, uh, virtual assistants. It's just a machine. Also, let's say you get into these accounts, but they're taking forever. Uh, you know, big deals turn into medium deals. I show you how to prevent that with closing the complex sale. Again, it's a whole year access. It's not just content. It's community. It's coaching. All of that stuff. And it's all put into the course. You consume it at the pace you want to, whether it's 10 minutes a day, an hour a week, whatever works for you on your smartphone, on your tablet, on your PC, wherever you want to do it. I got to get Apple TV. Burns is on Apple TV. <laughs> so check out the courses at B2B Revenue. You can get on my calendar. We can talk it over, see if it's a match. All I ask is that you're serious, that you really want to take your game to the next level, that you know what you want. I, I want to get on the phone and say, okay, what do you want? I want to double my income. I want to get a better job. I want my days full of new opportunities. I don't want a cold call anymore. I don't want a cold email. I don't want to do the, the stuff that everyone else is doing and isn't working. If it's working for you, God bless and good luck. But I'm talking to the people who really want to take their life and their game to a next level so that after this whole year is done, you, you go from a B to an A plus player and you have the skills to just crush it. That's what I want. I may make the courses um, limited because I really want just those people. The people who are really want to take their game to the next level, not people who are looking for the silver bullet or looking for, you know, it's a smart cut. It's not just a shortcut. It's a smart cut. So you can either spend 5, 10, 15, 20 years learning this stuff, or you can have somebody guide you through it. That's it. Also, are you on LinkedIn? Get on LinkedIn. Uh, follow the company page. 
the Brutal Truth About Sales and Selling podcast page. If you see my videos go by, my handsome little face while I do my walk and talks, and my neighbors call the police on me, give it a little thumbs up, uh, share your opinion. I'd appreciate that. And tell one person this week about the Brutal Truth. And make sure you're checking out the other podcasts, B2B Revenue, Leadership, and Sales Questions. Uh, if you have a sales question, you can email it to me. Uh, everything's in the show notes, just page up. Or you can go on to LinkedIn, send me a message there. I answer them all through the podcast, so I don't reply to you. I, I put it up into the podcast, Sales Questions Podcast. I love doing that. Also, YouTube, Brian Burns Sales on YouTube. Go check it out. We'll see you next time.